it was a mystery wrapped in folklore, whispered across generations and tangled in stories of shipwrecks, wanderers, and forgotten tribes. A phrase spoken with pride in some families and confusion in others, the Black Irish. For centuries, the term carried a strange magnetism. It conjured images of dark-haired, strikingly featured people scattered along Ireland's Atlantic coast, outliers in an island famous for pale skin and fiery red hair. Some believed they were heirs of Spanish sailors who washed ashore from the doomed armada. Others swore they were remnants of a vanished tribe older than the Celts themselves. And many dismissed it all as fantasy, a nickname with no scientific truth behind it. Yet the question remained, why do certain Irish families, especially those from the rugged western counties, look so different? Was it myth? Coincidence? Or was there an ancient story written in DNA that no legend had ever fully captured? For decades, historians and anthropologists tried to untangle the truth, but every path led back to the same fog of speculation. That fog only began to lift when a new kind of science, ancient DNA analysis, stepped onto the stage. And when it did, the truth that emerged from Ireland's soil was far stranger, older, and more powerful than any tale of Spanish sailors because the real origin of the Black Irish begins thousands of years before the Armada, before medieval clans, before even Celtic culture itself. It starts with bones. The Forgotten Bones In the late 1800s, Ireland was experiencing an archaeological awakening. Antiquarians roamed the countryside cataloging prehistoric sites, opening forgotten graveyards and collecting remains from windswept hills and abandoned parishes. Most of these discoveries looked ordinary, simple burials marked by stones or wooden crosses, the kind of graves countless villagers had been laid to rest in. When the notes were taken and the bones boxed, they vanished into museum basements in Dublin, London and Belfast. There they remained for more than a century, untouched, unexamined, unremembered, until a population geneticist stumbled upon them. While researching regional differences in Irish ancestry, he noticed something unusual. Several archived skeletons came from specific coastal communities long associated with the Black Irish phenotype. These villages, isolated, battered by Atlantic storms, shaped by centuries of hardship, had always stood apart culturally and physically. If any genetic clues existed, they might be locked in these forgotten bones. He contacted a team of paleogeneticists, the specialists capable of coaxing secrets from fragments of tooth enamel and bone dust. Carefully, they drilled into seven ancient teeth releasing grains of powder untouched for millennia. Inside that powder was ancient DNA, damaged, fragile, but still readable. What it revealed would overturn centuries of myth. The DNA surprise. When the genome code was finally reconstructed, it immediately defied expectations. Instead of matching cleanly with the Celtic or Viking ancestry that dominates much of Irish history, the sequences pointed towards something far older, an ancestry rooted in migration waves that reshaped Europe long before written records. But one detail stood out with startling clarity, a mutation strongly associated with hereditary hemochromatosis a condition where the body absorbs too much iron. Today, Ireland has the highest rate of this mutation in the world. Doctors call it the Celtic curse. Yet here it was in skeletons predating Celtic culture by centuries. This mutation was part of Ireland long before the Celts, long before Vikings, long before the Spanish Armada. 
To the researchers, this mutation was more than a medical clue. It was a genetic fingerprint, a marker that tied these ancient individuals directly to the very populations who in modern times are labeled as Black Irish. And it was only the beginning. The genomes carried traits linked to darker hair, darker eyes, and subtle metabolic adaptations that didn't match the simplistic image of fair Celtic Ireland. When compared to global DNA databases, these traits aligned not with Spain or the Mediterranean, but with the Atlantic facade of Europe, stretching back into the Deep Bronze Age. In other words, the roots of the Black Irish phenotype are far older than the myths that tried to explain it. An island transformed. Archaeologists have long known that something extraordinary happened in Ireland around 2500 to 2000 BCE. Stone monuments gave way to metal tools. New burial customs appeared. Pottery styles shifted overnight. For generations, scholars debated whether this represented invention or invasion. Ancient DNA ended the debate. It revealed that roughly 90% of Ireland's early population was replaced by incoming Bronze Age groups, people who arrived with new technologies, new languages, and new genes. These migrants brought ancestry that would profoundly shape Ireland's population for the next 4,000 years. Crucially, they carried genetic markers for dark or dark brown hair, distinctive eye shape and pigmentation, higher iron absorption, and a resilience to environmental stress, traits that would later become hallmarks of certain Irish families. These weren't newcomers in the 1500s. They were the people who became Ireland. As these groups settled, geography began to play its role. The western coastline, rugged, remote, difficult to farm, naturally isolated its inhabitants. Over centuries, limited marriage networks intensified certain traits within these communities. Genes that elsewhere might have remained rare became common, reinforced by isolation and survival pressures. By medieval times, these coastal groups already looked noticeably distinct, dark-haired, bright-eyed, sharp-featured. They hadn't inherited it from Spain. They had inherited it from Ireland's earliest Bronze Age settlers. The Paradox of Survival One mutation became especially widespread, C282Y the main driver of hereditary hemochromatosis. Today, this mutation can cause fatigue, organ damage, and serious health complications. But in the ancient world, it may have been a life-saving adaptation. Ireland was no stranger to famine. Crop failures were common. Livestock diseases could wipe out entire communities. In such conditions, the ability to store iron more efficiently could mean stronger immunity, better survival, and healthier children. This mutation may have given ancient Western Irish people an advantage, but at a cost. When famine became less frequent in modern times, the same mutation turned from benefit to burden. Thus emerged one of the great genetic paradoxes in Irish history. A mutation that once helped ancestors endure would later cause widespread illness among their descendants. And alongside this medical legacy came the physical traits, dark hair, striking eyes, strong bone structure that gave rise to the Black Irish label. Traits born not from mystery, but from survival. Then why the name Black Irish? If the ancestry is so old, why does the term appear only in the 1800s? The answer lies in famine and migration. After the Great Famine, millions fled Ireland, many from the western counties most associated with the Black Irish look. When these immigrants arrived in America, their features stood out against the waves of English, German, and Scandinavian immigrants. The nickname Black Irish emerged not as a scientific description, but as a cultural label, sometimes affectionate, sometimes dismissive. It was never meant to describe literal skin color, but rather the strikingly dark hair and eyes common among certain families. Ironically, the name was new. The look was ancient. But as the nickname spread into literature, genealogy, and folklore, it took on a mythic aura. People invented stories to explain it. Shipwrecks, secret lovers, lost tribes. But none of these tales ever matched the timeline or the genetic reality. 
only ancient DNA could reveal the truth hidden beneath the legends. The real story. When the full genetic picture is assembled, the answer becomes clear. The Black Irish are not the descendants of Spanish sailors. They are not the remnants of a hidden tribe. They are not a mystery waiting to be solved. They are the living echo of one of the most dramatic population shifts in European prehistory. When Bronze Age migrants transformed Ireland's people, culture, and genetic landscape, their darker features and distinctive traits did not arrive suddenly in the 1500s. They arrived 4,000 years earlier, preserved by geography, shaped by isolation, sharpened by famine, carried quietly through centuries, and eventually given a name by people who didn't know the story behind the faces they saw. A story written not in myth, but in bone, not in legend, but in the oldest code of all, DNA. The truth is simple and profound. The Black Irish were never outsiders. They were Ireland all along.